sick of spending money on having a company change your oil for you? Well, I'm going to teach you how to do it yourself so you don't have to spend the money. And you know what's done right. I've done several oil changes. <coughs> I learned from my stepdad, Ron Fox. He's a farmer, and he does all his mechanic work himself. And he's been doing oil changes for a long time. So I'm sure he taught me how to do them right. So first, you'll need to talk about what you'll need. Um, first, you need an oil pan. This is the one that I use, an oil pan. But I put my car up on a lift, so it's taller. If you're not going to use a lift, then um, that oil pan will be, it's smaller, but it's just, all it is is a circle thing that catches the oil, so you don't get it everywhere, you don't want it all over you. Um, next, you need an oil filter. This is what oil filters usually look like. Sometimes they're skinny or sometimes they're thicker, um, but that's what they generally look like. Um, I get my oil filters at Walmart, <coughs> and they have little computer devices that type in the gear make of your car, and then it'll tell you what oil filter to get. So um, Next, you need to get oil. Um, before you go wherever you're going to go to get your oil, look in your owner's manual of your car, which is usually in the glove box, and it'll tell you what kind of oil you need, because if you don't put the right oil in it, it's not good for your car. So, um, And then lastly, you'll need the right size wrench for your oil plug, and that's, it changes on different cars, so just kind of, when you go to change your oil, you just have to play around with different sizes and find the right size wrench. So. Um, now I can get started. I put my car up on a lift when I change my oil. So this is what my car looks like when it's parking on the lift, and then that's what it looks like in the air. So it makes it like you, most people don't get the luxury of using a lift when they change their oil, but I have one, so it, I just find it easier. You can just walk under. But if you don't have a lift, you can still change your oil. You just have to do it on your back, the thing on your side. Um, but just make sure if you do ever use a lift, somebody teaches you how to do it right, because if they don't, your car could fall on you, and that's not good for your car, and it could hurt too if you're standing under it. So. <coughs> This is what the underneath of my car looks like. This, all it is is just this is the front. Um, this is where your engine is. This is like my two front tires or whatever. And then this is your oil and oil plug right here. And I have a just picture of it too. Um, so this is your oil filter right here. And this is your oil plug. This is where your oil drains out. Um, once you're underneath your car, you can put your wrench on your oil plug right here. Which again, you have to find the right size so it fits not in your oil plug. Um, turn it in a counterclockwise motion until oil stuff starts coming out, but before you do that, make sure you put your oil pan underneath it, because then you'll get oil all over the floor, and that's not good. So, um, then you just take your oil plug out and wait for the oil to drain. It usually takes five minutes, maybe not even, so I just kind of sit there and text my friends on Facebook, whatever you want to do, you just got to wait for it to drain out. So, um, once it's done draining out, you can take your oil filter <coughs> off, and all you do to take your oil filter off is you just grab it firmly and just spin it in a counterclockwise motion until it comes off. Keep your oil pan underneath you when you do that because oil might come out from your oil filter too. Um, and then once you take it off, make sure, like this one, it's kind of hard to see, but there's a black rubber O-ring right here. Make sure that comes off with your oil filter <coughs> and take it off. Because if you don't take that off and you put your new oil filter on, it won't seal right, and then you'll get we will leak oil everywhere, and you don't want that to happen, so you have to keep refilling your car with oil. So, um, now you can put your oil filter back on. You take your new oil filter, and generally what I do is I just kind of stick my finger in my old oil and just put rubber oil right on your rubber O-ring, and then it helps it seal better. So if you don't do that, I mean, I, people don't say it's necessary to do it, but I like doing it because it's just kind of a caution to take. Just rub some oil on there. It's not, it doesn't take that long. It takes two seconds. So you might just do it quick. Um, but make sure if you're going to dab your finger in your old oil, make sure it's not hot because you can burn yourself, but it can be very hot, so just make sure you don't do that. So, And then you can put your new oil filter on, just put it up to where your old oil filter was and just spin it in a clockwise motion and then just go snug. Don't, doesn't need to be really tight because if you make if you put it on there too tight, then you won't might not be able to get it off next time you want to change your oil and then you have to sit there and play with it for a while and that won't be fun. So. It's just tight enough to get so it stays on there as I need to do. Um, next thing you put your oil plug back in, right here. It is the same thing. You put it back where it was before, and you spin it in a clockwise motion until it's snug. It doesn't have to be tight once again. Just snug so it stays on there. Um, now that you have put your new oil filter in and drained out your oil, you're ready to put your oil in. Um, to put your oil in, you have to pop your hood. and. It, the latch to pop your hood is in different places on cars. Mine is right here, but they're generally by your feet in your car or whatever, underneath your steering wheel. They're all in different places. You just have to look around for a little bit. And then once you put the latch 
then you have to unlatch your hood. So your hood will be down right now. This isn't showing it up, but your hood will be down right now. And then this is holding your like holding your hood from being able to pull it up. So you have to move that out of the way. So you have to reach underneath your hood and you have to lift up right there. And then it moves the latch out of the way and then you can lift your hood up. So once your hood is up, this is what your engine looks like. Well, it'll be different on different cars, but this is what mine looks like. This is where you want to put your oil in right here. It uses engine oil right here. They all usually say engine oil, so it's pretty easy to find. Um, all you have to do is just grab that and turn it in counterclockwise motion, take it off. And then once you take it off, with your oil in, I usually use a funnel. And that's what it looks like. It's just something. So it's really hard to pour your oil in here, like just in this without using a funnel. And you don't want to spill your oil everywhere. So use a funnel, just pour however many quarts your car needs. My, co my car takes five quarts of oil. And I mean, some cars are different. I know my friends takes four and a half quarts of oil. And you just don't, you have to look in your owner's manual and it'll tell you how much it takes. And then you put pour all your oil in there. And then once you're done pouring your oil in there, then you can just put your cap back on right here. And then your oil is changed. But make sure after you do change your oil, make sure that you don't um, you don't just start your car and drive away. That's not good for it. Make sure you start your car, let it run for 30 seconds or whatever. Just let it sit for a little bit until it starts to idle normal. And then once you're done, once you let it idle, then you're good to drive away. Just make sure you dispose of your oil filter and everything correctly. Don't just go throw it in a ditch somewhere. So, um, and that's all it takes to change the oil on a car or truck. It's one of the easiest things to do mechanically on a vehicle. Um, so if you ever want to surprise your parents on how smart you are with vehicles, then you can try this.